Hello and welcome. In this video and in this series of videos, I'm going to take you through online course creation at quite a high level, but I want to take you through the key steps, step by step. So if you're completely new to it, you'll hopefully find this a really good summary, exposition, if you like, of the whole process. Online course creation isn't actually difficult but it can seem complicated. If you're coming at this for the first time, then there's lots of stages and lots of steps and lots of detail, which you'll need to understand and gradually learn over time. But unless you have an initial framework to work with, then you're going to find it really difficult. And I want to work with you through this process to help you to understand the whole process step by step, and that will hopefully make it easier for you. My name is John Colley. I'm an online course creator. I'm also um, very much into digital marketing. I'm a 30-year investment banker. I've had two investment banking firms of my own. And so I'm also um, an entrepreneur, and now I'm a digital entrepreneur. I created my first online course in 2013, and I've pretty well been creating them nonstop ever since. And I love doing it, and I really hope you're going to enjoy doing it too. In these years, I've created over 4,000 videos. I reckon that's about 330 hours of video content and over 40 courses. And my courses are changing and being amalgamated and being moved around the whole time. It's a moving feast. It's not a sort of something that stands still, but I hope you're going to enjoy what I've got to share with you now. So this first step that I want to take you through uh, in this whole online course creation process is the expert positioning. Now, what I mean by this is that we are all good at something. Everybody is an expert at something. You just go and think about what you, you're good at. What do people turn to you for help about? So it might be model airplane making. It might be basket weaving. It might be cooking. It might be your expertise in wine. Or it might be some business um, related thing like digital marketing or um, uh, creating online courses even. And people come to me about creating online courses all the time. So you have to work out where your expertise. And the key to this is to not think, how can I make money? The key to this is how can you serve your audience? You need to find the people who need you and then work out how you can help them. The money follows, but it's not at the front of the queue. You have to focus on adding value for your customers. And this means that you have to go and identify their problems and their difficulties and then create solutions for those, which you can then help them to come along, discover, find, understand and want to buy from you. Now, ideally, you want to try and create courses that require as little updating as possible. It's very difficult if you're creating a a uh, course about a piece of software. Software changes all the time and you're going to be continually having to update that. That's just part and parcel. But for instance, my mergers and acquisitions courses, a lot of that is actually pretty well standard and a lot of it doesn't change very much. And so in a sense, it is evergreen. People can come and watch the same content in five years time and still learn very valuable information. Now, whatever you do, don't bluff, don't plagiarize, don't steal other people's information because once you lose trust, you can't get it back. And really just focus on the areas that you're excited about, that you're in, you enjoy doing, that you have a deep knowledge about, because that will come across and people will love it and want to learn from you. Online course creation step two then is topic selection. So we've understood what you're good at, but this doesn't automatically mean you just go rushing out and make a course about whatever you feel. You need to identify topics that sell, but you also need to identify topics that uh, solve pain and problem points. Don't create a general course about X, Y, or Z. Create a general course about how to fix something if X, Y, and Z goes wrong. One of the best ways to research this is go and look at Amazon in their bestseller list in your niche. Open up and have a look inside and look at the... Um, the topics and the areas they're covering, and you can get some good hints from the list of contents to see the sorts of areas that you might be able to cover as well. And if you want to go a step further, try and pre-qualify the need for your course 
by talking to two or three people you know who are your target audience and ask them what they need help with because that's one of the best ways to find out what you should be creating in the way of a course topic. Always, always, always focus on the pain or problem of your audience and your course has to very clearly set out to solve that pain or problem. Every course has to deliver a solution. It has to take your student from point A where they are now in pain and having a problem to point B where they're problem problem free. Difficult to say that problem free. So it's it's critically important that you design your course with this in mind. Think about the uh, acronym W I I F M. If you haven't heard about it, it's what's in it for me, and that is what will be in the brain of your student when they're looking at the uh, course topic and deciding whether to enroll in your course. Is this going to help me? What's in it for me if I take this course? And if you can answer that question for them, you're going in the right direction. Online course creation then step three. I want to talk about marketplaces and platforms. Before you start even creating your course, I want you to be thinking about where you're going to be putting your course to sell it. And your basic choice is either on marketplaces or on platforms. And we'll talk about these in a little bit of detail so you understand the difference because it does impact on the sort of course you create. Marketplaces are essentially places where the people who run them sell your course for you. So you put the course up there, they do the selling bit for you, they take a part of the uh, revenue from the sale of the course in return for that, and uh, everybody wins. The, the two best examples and the two places I do best are Udemy and Skillshare, and you can find those by just Googling them. Uh, they do sell your courses for you, but the prices are relatively low. Having said that, it's a high volume game. They have thousands and thousands, in the case of Udemy, millions of students. So by just getting a small piece of that pie, you can still get quite a nice monthly income. Platforms are where you put your course up. They host your course for you in return for a small monthly free. Uh, and you have to do the selling. So you need to have that audience. You need to be able to go out and find people who will want to buy your courses. And the two examples I would quote there are Thinkific and Teachable. And I use both of them and I like them both pretty well equally. So I wouldn't call out between them. But those are the four things. And I want to keep it simple. The four places, Udemy, Skillshare, Thinkific and Teachable, where you need to start about how you're going to put your courses up. Now, having your own school on a platform is important because if anything happens to Udemy or to Skillshare, you still have your all your courses. So I would recommend at the very least that even if you publish your marketplaces, you also duplicate and publish and have a set of all your courses on a platform such as Thinkific or Teachable, which you control, you control the pricing on. And it means that you also, uh, if anything happens to those platforms or they shut you out, you are not losing all that work and effort you've put in. So you need to start planning now how you're going to sell your courses. Online course creation, then the fourth step, we're looking at planning and outlining your course. It's essential before you start to create your course that you plan your content in advance. I've already mentioned the problem solution and you do need to have this clear process which takes a problem and derives a solution for it. A clear route from A to B for your students to travel. And this means you need to organize your sections, your lectures and your lecture content. I normally do it in a sort of bullet pointed list so that you can actually see very clearly uh, how you're going to build up the content of your course. And once you've got this written, uh, and if you're expert in the subject, it's not difficult to write, but maybe getting some of the detail takes a bit more research. But once you've got this written, actually creating the course is relatively straightforward because you've done the hard creative work in putting that plan in place. Whatever you do, leave your introduction and your summary lectures until last. The reason for that is, although you may have this plan, but plans always change a little bit when you're doing it and you want to be able to summarize what you've created, then go back to the beginning and tell people what they have got coming once you've put it all in place, once you've created the course itself, then you explain the summary at the end and at the beginning. Ensure that your title, the title of your course, 
is very purpose driven. It explains very clearly who it's for and the problem it's solving and as succinctly as possible and using keywords and topic words as much as possible to help in SEO. And we're going to talk about search engine optimization. So in the next uh, lecture, I'm going to introduce you to a incredibly brilliant, but totally free, real-time secret weapon to help you with this process. Online course creation step five, then, is Udemy Insights. And I told you it was going to be a secret weapon. It's actually not so secret, but if you don't know about it, it's as much, it might as well be a secret. What you have to do is go and sign up to the Udemy platform as an instructor before you make your course. And then you'll get access to what is called the Udemy Insights tool, which is a brilliant tool. I've actually got a complete course on this inside my masterclass. And it helps you to identify the competitive space within Udemy in real time. Now, this is uh, not necessarily, you don't have to necessarily use it just for Udemy, but the point about it is that you can identify clear topics and subtopics and related topics. You can find out the keywords that are interesting and relevant to those topics and other related keywords that are roundabout. It'll show you the student demand. It'll show you whether there's an awful lot of supply, other com you know, courses competing. It'll give you an idea about the economics of these courses. Um, it'll also, and very importantly, show you who the best-selling courses are in the space. It tells you who your main competitors are. It's brilliant. You can go and look at their courses and work out how you're going to create even better courses. So you really have to look at this insights tool and use it very professionally. Whether you sell on Udemy or not, it doesn't matter. This is real-time information which you simply cannot afford to ignore. Online course creation number six, equipment and resources. Now, this does not have to be a very technical section and you don't have to be very technical to create courses, but you do need to be able to master some of the basics. First and foremost, you need a room which has got reasonably good acoustics and where you can work undisturbed and away from outside noise that you can record your course in. You'll obviously need a computer, a PC or a Mac, and you will need some form of HD video camera. Now, I use a little Logitech camera, which is very inexpensive, but hey, the mobile phones today have got brilliant cameras on them, and you might well be able to use your mobile phone, at least to start with. You will, however, need to get a decent quality USB mic. I use a, um, a Yeti, a Blue Yeti um, uh a mic which is um, about $130, $140. Uh, anything uh, by Blue I think is very good. It does have to be USB. Don't get one with a little pointed jack on it, but it doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that, as long as it has decent sound. And while we're talking about mics, make sure you get a pop filter as well, just to stop the air from your mouth um, going onto the uh, the microphone. For software, you'll need to create presentations. I'm creating this presentation in Keynote because I'm on a Mac. You could do this in PowerPoint, but you will need to have some form of um, uh, PowerPoint or presentation software. You may, of course, be doing recordings of your screen if you're talking through uh, some sort of process with a screencast. Uh, for that, then, you will need uh, ScreenFlow, Mac, or Camtasia for PC. There are alternatives to all these, but these are the ones I use that I'm familiar with and they work for me. Online course creation step seven, lecture creation. In this process, you need to work out what works for you, but I strongly recommend that you get into the habit of having a very simple system for creating your videos. I have one which makes video creation very fast and efficient. I always use the same template from Keynote, and I just copy the first two slides, which is the beginning slide and the first bullet point slide, to start off any new uh, video lecture. It makes it very fast. I'm not setting up templates all the time and I'm not messing around. For each lecture, then, I create the slide deck, what you're seeing here, addressing the key points of the lecture. And what I like to do is to talk to those points as I'm talking to you now. You'll see there's no script around the place. You may prefer to have a script, and if you're off camera, then you can do that. I find it quite difficult 
to talk to the camera and read a script at the same time. Of course, you you can get um, teleprompters and things like this, but that's starting to make life quite complicated. So if you have a script, you probably are not going to appear in, in, in front of the camera. If you don't have a script and you can talk to the subject as I'm talking to you now, then that works really well. Um, you record the video speaking to the points and that's got your basic lecture started. I then pull this um, recording into ScreenFlow. I put transitions at the beginning and the end so the, 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 the images fade from black to come in and they fade to black to go out. I make sure I've got my speaking head positioned and cropped where I want it at the right size, that I've got the transitions correct. In this one, I'm going to be coming in and coming out because I've got these title slides all the way through. If I want to put in call-in arrows or extra text or anything like that, then you can do that. You then save the file and I export it always to 720p, not to 1080 HD, only because 720p is perfectly adequate for any of the platforms at the moment that you're publishing on and 1080d files are so much bigger. I can make a lecture using this process that I've used time and time again, I mean, literally hundreds of times. It's start to finish in about 30 minutes. This particular um, whole process of the lecture, um, this, this particular one is 52 slides, and I will be slicing it up for different places, but um, uh, it's taken me a little bit longer. But if it's a typical five-minute lecture, then you can do the whole thing from start to finish in about 30 minutes. On a good day, I've done 10 lectures, and in a good you know, week, I've done a whole course. So it just shows if you have a system, you can actually become much more productive and much more efficient. Online course creation, step eight, a few production tips. You need to think about the length of your course. And you're probably asking yourself, thinking you want to ask me, how many sections and how many lectures? And the simple answer is, whatever solves the problem your course is addressing. You know, try not to have sections which have got too many videos in. You can split them up. I mean, part of the problem with the uh, the course management systems, whether they're platforms or marketplace, is they're pretty two-dimensional. It's sections and lectures. And it's very difficult, unless you start having separate courses, to have a, another tier of, of category. So you need to think about how you can do that. One little tip I would say is that uh, for some of these courses, like in my masterclass, I have planning and then production and then promotion as, as like separate introductions to each section, which helps to make clear which are which. Keep your lectures to around five minutes and have a clear plan before you start. This will help you to make sure that you don't waste time creating a lot of content that you don't subsequently need. Write your lecture notes for each lecture as you go. It's very difficult to come back and write little lecture descriptions because all the information in the lecture won't be in your mind. So do it at the time that you record the lecture. And in, in, ensure that you write your course description like a sales letter because that's what it's going to be doing. It's going to be selling your course to your audience and that's what you need to get across. And of course, you need a good personal image. You need a, an image which is a clear headshot, high quality, good definition, good lighting, with your eyes looking straight at the camera, so people feel you're looking at them. And of course, you need a relevant bio, positioning yourself as an expert in the field that you want to teach. And it's always worth keeping that up to date. Online course creation, step nine, we're going to talk about copywriting. It's worthwhile investing some time to understand a little bit about copywriting. Essentially, what we're talking about here is learning how to write in order to sell something. And there is an art to this, and there are structures and frameworks that you can use. And I teach quite a lot of this in both my masterclass and in other of my courses. I've got a couple of copywriting courses. Because it's so important. If you're a digital entrepreneur, you really need how to communicate the uh, marketing of your products and services in writing. And that's what copywriting is all about. And when you are doing anything to write about your course, you should be thinking about the key principles of copywriting to apply these to have the most impact on your audience. Now, one little simple framework, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, is AIDA. And anybody who's familiar with uh, copywriting will have heard about this. And AIDA stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, Action. And what we're talking about here 
is the psychological process, the psychological journey your words take your audience through in order to move them from coming across you for the first time to actually taking action and buying from you. And the first thing you have to do is to get their attention. So you do this with a headline or some sort of controversial statement, but right up front. You then have to develop that into an interest. So you have to be empathetic. You have to touch their emotions. You have to show them that you understand how they feel, how much they're struggling, how much pain they're in. But of course, you're also reminding them about this pain. So you're bringing this issue first and foremost right up front, which means you can get them to focus on it, which means then you can then make them feel uh, that, that, you know, that pain is resonating with them and it's inside them and they want to get free of it. And that it creates desire to actually find a solution, which you then, of course, offer to provide. And then finally, action says, well, look, in order to, to do this, you can't just do nothing. You have to take action. Come and buy my course. So AIDA is just a very simple framework. Um, there are much more complex ones which go into much more detail. But do start thinking about how you can use copywriting as a tool to be a more effective uh, seller, marketer of your online courses. Online course creation step number 10. I want to talk to you briefly about launching your course. Now, course launch day is really exciting and it's fantastic when it arrives. But actually, you need to have done quite a lot of pre-marketing and a lot of telling your audience before your course launch day comes along about your course to get them excited about it. So you need to have a course launch plan. This excitement, building the anticipation of your audience before your course uh, comes out, is very important so that when it does come out, people are ready to look at it carefully and decide if they want to buy. So do tell your audience, your tribe, your followers on social media, that the course is coming. And why not offer them an incentive to sign up with you so that you can email them on launch day and give them maybe a special coupon or something so that they can sign up for the course right away and buy it from you. So you, if you like, you almost pre-sell your course before you launch it, which gives you some real momentum either in the marketplaces or on your platforms for future sales. And don't forget to get the testimonials and the ratings and the reviews as quickly as you can to further reinforce the uh, credibility of the authority of your course in order to get even more sales. So on launch day, you really need to have a social media marketing blitz so that as far and wide as you can, you're letting people know this course is out there. Email your list, put out social media posts, share your promotional video everywhere, but also go to your extended network, go and ask your friends and influencers to tell their audience about your course. Give them a link and maybe even you could set them up as affiliates so that if they do bring traffic to your course, then they get paid something for it. There's nothing wrong with that. The more you can do to give your course early momentum, uh, the more sales you're gonna get obviously on day one, but also in the long term as well. What this really means is you need to create a process that time and again, you can reuse for each of your course launches. And this means that your course sales should start to snowball, but it also makes it so much easier because if you've got a checklist and you've got a process, then a course launch becomes an absolute cinch. So give your course launch considerable thought. Don't just pub hit the publish button, sit back and wait to see what's going to happen. Online course creation step 11, search engine optimization. This is also known as SEO. Search engine optimization is all about using uh, words that the search engines will um, pick out in order to understand the relevance of what you have compared to what people are looking for. And these are called keywords. So if you use your keywords uh, correctly, then you will help to get your courses found not only in the marketplaces, but also on the internet by Google and Bing and all the other search engines. So you do need to grasp the essentials of search engine optimization. When you're looking at insights, I talked to you about insights in a previous part of this recording. Think about your course topic keyword 
and your how you're going to build that into your course URL because this all helps the search engines to understand exactly what your course is about. One of the ways to keep on top of this is to install analytics, Google Analytics, in a, in a sense, Udemy Insights is a form of analytics, uh, and you can then have a look at the analytics relating to your course. I can't go into analytics, it's far too complicated here, but uh, although there's huge amounts of in-depth stuff you can do with Google Analytics, there are a few basic things you can do as well, which will actually be more than sufficient to get you started. So definitely take a look at using analytics to then reinforce how you're going to um, apply keywords to make your uh, written words about your courses more search engine friendly. And remember, this is important because the search engines can't search the content of the video they and they can't search a, an image. They rely on the writing around the video and around the images, uh, sometimes called metadata as well, as well as the course descriptions and the lecture descriptions uh, and the lecture titles and the section titles. They rely on all this written word in order to find and then rank you for the relevance for other searches. So search engine optimization is a critical skill. You don't need to become a mega expert, but you certainly need to have some awareness of how it works. Online course creation number 12. Let's talk about promotional videos. I want you here to put your copywriting skills to good use. Yes, you're going to write a video sales letter. Sorry, you're going to write a promotional video. Well, actually, they're the same thing, pretty well. The whole purpose of the promotional video is to sell your course. So it needs to be relatively short, punchy. It needs to explain who you are. It needs to explain what your course is about. The benefits, not the, the content, but the benefits of the course for the student. And then you need to give them a good push to say, come and enroll. Apply the AIDA principles, uh, misspelled, principles. Um, apply the AIDA principles uh, to this. Create interest in the course by explaining the problem it solves and then develop that in desire. Make them understand that it can solve their problem and then give them a call to action and get them to buy the course. It's very important that your promotional videos have good audio. You can appear in the screen, a bit like I'm appearing here, or you can have great graphics. In essence, you are selling your expertise, so it is good that you show up on screen for at least part of the video. Keep it brief, three to five minutes tops, maybe three minutes is, is quite enough. And ensure, ensure, ensure that you have a call to action telling them to enroll in your course at the end of the video. Absolutely critical. You can then take your promotional video, not just for your course on the marketplace or on the platform, but use it everywhere else that you can attract attention to your course. And it's basically a selling medium for your course. And then have a link in the description below the video that takes them back to the course, perhaps with a promotional code attached to it. So you can put your promo video on YouTube. You can put it on your LinkedIn page or in your LinkedIn groups. You can put it up on Instagram. You can put it in Facebook. There's lots of places where you can put it out without being too spammy um, and share the, the fact that the course is there and yes, people can come back and enroll in it and get some positive benefit and real value added from you. Online course creation, step 13, understanding marketing. Now, before you rush off to promote your course, you do need to have some understanding of digital marketing. And I'm here talking about uh, pull marketing, not push marketing. This is not advertising, as you see on the telly, the 30 second spot marketing. OK, it's very different. Digital marketing is completely the reverse. Basically, you're taking your audience, your avatar, and you're taking them through a customer journey from finding you, knowing you, liking you, trusting you, and then wanting to buy from you. And this means that you have to create interest for them up front. Show them your expertise, show them your authority, and create interest with content and lead magnets. Lead magnets are things you offer them in return for their sign up to your email list. Once you've got them in your email list, you can then send them through your email sequence funnel. And you can send them a series of e uh, emails over a period of time, developing their interest and their desire 
to uh, work with you and eventually to buy your course and you offer the sale opportunity only at the end. It is important that you get your marketing properly organised. Yes, the marketplaces will do some of that for you, but you do need to get yourself properly organised and put it, put it in place thoroughly. And this means having um, campaigns and having key calendar dates in mind. Don't forget, for instance, Black Friday. But you do need to have an ongoing process. This is not something you do once and forget about. Once you've got the, the course created, you can sell it many, many times, but you have to do that marketing uh, in order to achieve that goal. So let's move on logically to online course creation step 14, which is marketing your course. And we'll talk here in a little bit more detail about course marketing. I have a, a course marketing blueprint in my masterclass, but uh, essentially, if we take through some of the, look at some of the steps, um, first of all, have a clear brand. Make sure that people see you clearly as the authority and the expert that you are, and that needs to come across. My brand is the Six Minute Strategist, solving one problem in six points in under six minutes. Then you need to think about the content you're going to create to create interest in your course. The promotional video is only one example of that. But you do need to have a content creation strategy, and you pretty well have to become a content creation engine in order to keep churning out um, material that will interest your audience and grow your audience and that will bring them to your uh, lead magnets and make them want to sign up with you. And this piece of content here is exactly what I'm doing. So your lead magnets can be, uh, in essence, they could be a short free course or it could be a five day challenge or it could be uh, an ebook or a PDF. It's something you exchange with them for free in return for their email. And once you've got their email, then you can go to work on them in your uh, email marketing and in your email marketing funnel. So this means you have a campaign set up which sends them automatic emails uh, every few days. There are various platforms for doing this. Uh, Infusionsoft, ActiveCampaign, Mail, uh, Chimp, um, Aweber. So there's an, a number of solutions here which you can use um, and they cost a few dollars, but they're not vastly expensive. But it does mean once you um, have got the email address, you can then start to market on a consistent and automated basis. We'll talk about automation in a moment um, to your audience. Of course, you can go and broaden your audience by developing your authority in different places on social media. And that's called social media marketing. So you have a Facebook group, you have an Instagram account, you have a Twitter account. And by creating interesting content on that, more important people will be drawn to you, follow you, and then you can start to take steps to get them to the top of your funnel, which is the exchange of the email for the lead magnet. Automation is important because there's a limit to how much you can do, even if you have VAs. And the more of this that you can set on automation, so it happens automatically, the better. And this means setting up these automatic emails, for instance. You know, but you can also schedule things ahead and have the scheduler send things out uh, for you. So if I want to schedule a week's worth of Twitter um, tweets, you know, I can uh, get them all done in a batch set them to go on a scheduler and then they're off and I didn't have to worry about them anymore. And that automation saves me time. I don't have to keep on going back to Twitter during the day, every day, to get this campaign out. And finally, don't forget the power of free because um, it's really important that you accept the principle of paying forward and that you are prepared to give things for free before you ask people for money because they need to have some sort of interaction and contact with you before they'll be ready to put their hands in their pocket. Now, I'd like to talk to you about podcasting very briefly. I think podcasting is a brilliant way of getting your message across and it's a fantastic marketing tool. You really get people's interest. I'm going to turn this uh, series of videos into a podcast episode just because I'm repurposing the content and that's another clever little principle which I haven't even touched on here. And the whole point about podcasting is you get into somebody's uh, head for half an hour, an hour at a time. And it's a fantastic way of communicating to people. So I strongly look at, suggest you look at podcasting as part of your marketing tools going forward. Uh, webinars are more complex to put together, uh, take a lot more work to get ready, but they can be very effective and they're very good selling tools, particularly for higher end products. You do need to understand how marketing funnels work, the principle of getting people in at the top, 
processing them through an automated process and making them an offer at the bottom. And again, this means you get your, your automation and your marketing campaign organized with a clear objective, which is to sell at the end. And of course, you need to understand traffic generation. Now, you might place paid ads, in which case you will be paying to get traffic to come, or you can do uh, create content, and then you earn that attention by giving them the content and creating the interest that way. So whether you pay or you, you do uh, organic uh, um, traffic generation, it is entirely up to you. But you do need to have... Uh, or, and give thought to how you're going to get traffic to your content uh, in order to get eyeballs on it. Course marketing is something that is continuous. And once you've created your course, you have to accept you're going to continually be marketing your content. And that's part and parcel of building your authority, building your following, and getting people to understand that you have something you can offer them of real value. Online course creation step 15, the course creation wrap up. So I briefly want to go through what we've covered. Essentially, there are four key stages. Planning your course, producing your course, publishing your course, and promoting your course. But I want you to focus beyond your first course. And that's, if you like, the fifth stage. Maybe it's portfolio or maybe it's platforms. But where else can you sell your course? How else can you take this valuable content and earn even more money from it through different channels? I want you to think as well about a product pyramid. And what I mean by this is that you have a series of products. Some are low priced at the bottom, but at the top of the pyramid, you have a small, very highly exclusive uh, product, which is very uh, expensive. And you have different products on the way up to the top. And the more of your time that these products require, so if it's coaching and consulting, then they should be at the very most expensive because you are giving out your most invaluable commodity, which is your time. Think about your pricing strategies and the different levels you have. So it might be $9, $99, $499, and $1,000. Whatever it is, you do need to have a logical progression in your pricing strategy matching your product pyramid. And of course, if you do go and do anything that requires your own personal time, coaching and consulting, that, as I've said, it's the most expensive um, uh, product or service you can offer and it should be priced accordingly. So that's the course wrap up. And it's the last module in this online course creation step-by-step um, -step process that I taken you through and I hope you found it really helpful. So online course creation explains step by step. In these 15 steps I've tried to give you a structured framework and an insight into some of the, the detail of creating an online course and how that can then become the foundation for an online business for you and that I hope can make a real change and a real impact on your life for the better and maybe it can bring you success in other areas, it can free up, it can clear you of debt, whatever it is, I really hope it's going to be beneficial to you.